I'm gonna do something that's probably a little bit stupid because I haven't prepared it, but <laughs> it's a video that I've planned on filming and I needed to prepare it and I've not prepared it and I have time now. So I'm gonna film it without any preparation <laughs> and it probably does need a bit of preparation. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wing it <laughs> and hope for the best. Um, and that is, I'm gonna film the A2S survey, which is a book tag. Uh, this person says the survey was originally created by the perpetual page turner. Here we go, A to Z. Let's do it. Author you've read the most books from, Agatha Christie. I think I've read 25 of her books now. And so far, my favorites are The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, um, Perilla End House. <laughs> I'm completely blanking. Come on, Luca, you can do this. Um, and others. <laughs> Best sequel ever. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Hellbent. I think Hellbent is probably the best sequel I've ever read. I enjoyed it even more than the first book, which was Ninth House. I think it is partially to do just with the fact that I know the characters and so I could just immediately get into the story and be invested because, as I say, I already knew the characters, so I didn't have to go through the whole process of, you know, doing the whole world building and all the rest of it. So I think probably that, if you don't know what that is, it's a dark academia fantasy following Galaxy Stern. Listen, I know, I know that these names are gonna put you off, <laughs> but it's worth it if you haven't read these books yet. She is sent to this very prestigious school because she has this unique talent and that is that she can see dead people and she can talk to them. I think she can talk, no, can she? I don't know, anyway. She has a very traumatic past. She goes to this prestigious school, her friend Darlington. I'm trying to remember this is what happens in the first book. Her friend Darlington, again, <laughs> another name that is gonna put you off, disappears. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> and yeah, I really enjoyed Hellbent. Um, the other one that I was gonna mention, I loved Robin Hobbs series, the Farseer trilogy, is that what it's called? And the second book in that one, which I think was called Royal Assassin? the best out of the three. Incredible. That one, you're following, <laughs> it's again a fantasy trilogy, you're following this bastard son <laughs> who still has to live within the royal family and he serves as, is that a spoiler? As an assassin? I mean, I'm, I'm missing out a lot of details on this series, obviously, but um, yeah, he's, he's a royal assassin. He's a bastard son. <laughs> There's a lot of political intrigue. He um, has this like animal affinity. He can feel animals' feelings and he's very good with animals and he has a pet wolf. <laughs> Is that exciting? I don't know. Currently reading. I'm currently reading Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This is a standalone book in the Cosmere universe and it is a part of Brandon Sanderson's Secret Projects saga series. You can read it without reading the other books. There are easter eggs in it um, and it is a cozy fantasy following Tress who essentially sets out with a bunch of pirates to try and find the love of her life. She already knows him, it's just that he's, he's for some reason disappeared and she's off to find where he's gone off to, so <laughs> she's off to save him. There's Talking Rat, Pirates, it's a good time. <laughs> Drink of choice whilst reading, anything hot. <laughs> Most of the time, I would say it's a good English brew. E-reader or physical book, nothing is ever, ever, ever gonna be a physical book. Physical books, the smell, the feel of them, the excitement when you get them. I'm always gonna prefer a physical book. However, I love my e-reader and I take it everywhere with me. It is a staple in my handbag. I will go to work and I know that I'm gonna be working for seven hours and I will still take my Kindle with me for emergencies. 
Um, so I, I love it and it's so convenient and especially when I'm traveling, reading in bed at night, I read so much more because I have my Kindle and it's just so convenient. So I, I love e-readers, I have nothing against them, but they're never going to trump a physical book. Fictional character you probably would have actually dated in high school. The only character that I can think of. I don't know, I'm not very good at like picturing characters that much. I don't think I'm a character girly. Yeah, I don't I don't get crushes on characters or anything like that. But the only one that I can kind of think of, and I don't know why, because I couldn't tell you I don't think I can even tell you his name. Is it Will? I couldn't tell you any kind of sort of characteristic attribute for this person. Will from his dark materials, Lyra's love interest. I don't know why, that's the only person I can remember. And I think it's because I did read it when I was in secondary school and it was one of my all time favorite series. It's another fantasy series. I think everybody knows the film, uh, The Golden Compass, and this is the book series that that film is based on. And the book series, I mean, <sighs> I can understand why they never continued the films because the series are very, very complex. The book books are very, very complex, but I, it was my all time favorite series. I love it so much and I can't reread it because I'm scared that it will taint the memories I have of it. So I don't want to reread it, but I remember being absolutely addicted and I would spend the whole day reading those books and I would think about those characters when I went to bed. And I, you know, I was just obsessed. I love them. I used to go to school and think about the characters and wonder what they were up to and if they were gonna be okay. And the ending of that series destroyed me. <laughs> I still have the emotional scars. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know why. That's my answer for that question. Will. I don't even know if his name is Will. Is Will not the other one who disappears? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, glad you gave this book a chance. <sighs> See, this is where I should have done my research and prepped this first so that I could give a good answer. Oh, I'm gonna have to look through my Goodreads. Give me a minute. I don't, I don't know. I can't remember what I had for breakfast, let alone what I've read over the years. I'm glad I looked through my Goodreads. Okay, the one that I'm glad I gave a chance was Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danthorff. <sighs> Okay, so this one had been on my radar for like several months before I picked it up. And once again, I was drawn to the cover. It's beautiful. It's stunning. I love it. I love the yellow. And I was really, really scared to pick it up because firstly, the blurb, because the book is quite complex, the blurb, it's difficult to really get a grasp on what this book is before you go into it. And it's very dis divisive. A lot of people don't like it and some people are obsessed with it. I, now that I've read it, I'm obsessed with it. I had the best time. It's a gothic toned Victorian private school story with plenty of queerness and mysterious deaths. <laughs> That it's just, it has, it's, it's intense. It's an intense book. It's long, there's lots of alternating POVs, switches in timelines. It's lengthy, it's slow, it's a very descriptive book. Stories within stories, there are multiple characters, there's an omniscient narrator that loves a good footnote, I remember that. <laughs> So it's, it's, it's quite busy and might feel quite confused to some. If you're interested though, I 100% recommend it. The writing was so amazing. As I said, it's very descriptive, but the way the, write, the author would describe things felt so real. I felt like I was there. I've never felt so immersed in a book, probably since I was like a kid and my imagination was much better back then. So I, I love this book. I love it. I know it's not gonna be for everyone, but I had such a good time with it. That's the, the book that I wanna answer for that one. A hidden gem book. Maybe not a gem book because I gave it three stars, but I just read Blood Over Brighthaven, which is by a slightly lesser known author. I feel like not many booktubers know about this author or talk about them. I know that this is their second book and I believe they are self-published. Don't let that freak you out. The writing is very, very good. And I think that some people will 
love this book. I feel like the author doesn't get enough recognition and definitely deserves it. And especially with this kind of resurgence of love for dystopian books. It's not, is it, is it, is it technically a dystopia? I don't know. But you're following this main character, Sayona, I don't know. She is out to become high mage. She wants her name to go down in history. She wants people to know who she was and she wants to leave a mark on the world. It's a fantasy book that focuses on colonialism, racism, and sexism. <laughs> I personally, the reason it was only three stars for me is because I personally feel like it wasn't really saying anything new and it wasn't very innovative or, yeah, I feel like it, it's been done before. But again, I just think so many people would really, really love it. So I would recommend trying this one out. <sighs> Important moment in your reading life. Meeting Luna. There we go. <laughs> I bet Luna didn't know that she was going to be mentioned in this video. My friend Luna. I met her this year when I was traveling and I am very, very grateful for her for many, many reasons. But number, number one, <laughs> that's not the number one reason, but one of the reasons that I'm very, very grateful and why I'm answering Luna for this question is because I haven't had that many friends who also enjoy reading and Luna <laughs> does love reading and I'm so happy that I can talk about books with her and we're gonna try and do some buddy reading at one point we were supposed to do in October and it was a fail anyway and we've read some similar books now and we can like compare what we think about books and I would say she's an important moment in my reading life just finished. I think I just answered this question. Have I finished anything else since then? No. Um, so yeah, Blood Over Bright Haven. That's the one that I've just finished. Kind of books you won't read. Um, I think I answered this in a different video. And honestly, my answers could change from day to day. It depends on my mood. But yeah, historical fiction, poetry, uh, self-help. Anything else? Mainly those. Badly written books, is that a good answer? That's a lie anyway, I do read badly written books. Longest book you've read? Let me Google this. Oh, it might be Les Miserables. <laughs> Wait, let me see. Les Miserables, page count. 1,000, okay. So <laughs> either it's Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I read the unabridged version and that one is 1,462 pages. Or how long is the Comte de, Le Comte de Monte Cristo? Okay, 1,276. So, so far Les Miserables is winning. Or is it The Way of Kings? But I think The Way of Kings is 1,200 pages. 1,007? Oh, that's the hardcover. I think the paperback is 1,200, but anyway, it's Les Miserables de Victor Hugo. Okay, <laughs> okay, all right, yeah. I'm at a Disney, Disney, no, 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 no. Major book hangover because of, <laughs> I think this is such a boring answer, but Harry Potter probably. Yeah, probably Harry Potter. I'm not Harry Potter, like a huge Harry Potter nerd. I read the series when I was younger, just like everyone else, and I, don't think I've ever been so upset that I couldn't live in a universe that isn't mine as much as the Harry Potter universe. Mm. His Dark Materials, as I said, did absolutely destroy me and cripple me for years. <laughs> those are the two that are coming to mind, so one of those. Number of bookcases you own. Currently don't own any because I'm living at my parents and I had to sell my old bookcases. One book you have read multiple times. There's a few. I've read The Woman in Black. <laughs> I've read that one. It's got to be at least a dozen times now. It's a glass classic ghost story. Yeah, it's about this some kind of guy who works with paperwork and an old lady dies and he has to go to her home to sort out her affairs and whilst he's there it's this very isolated house in the middle of nowhere and it's surrounded by these really dangerous marshes where if you're not careful you could very easily get lost drown and the only way to access this house is when it's low tide and it's just a classic ghost story very very good i've read it loads and loads of times i don't think it's it stands up quite as well now but 
I would still recommend giving it a go if you're interested. It's very short as well. I've read The Lord of the Rings, the whole trilogy maybe five or six times now. I've read the Harry Potter books multiple times. I've read The House in the Ru Cerulean Sea, that's a comfort book for me and I've read that twice now and I will definitely reread it again. Yeah, preferred place to read. <laughs> bed probably. <laughs> Usually bed. Quote that inspires you gives you all the feels from a book you've read. Oh my god I'm gonna say the most boring thing. I can't think of a quote <laughs> that inspires me off the top of my head and I'm not gonna look it up okay. <laughs> so boring but it is just a classic opening to a book for a reason. Last night I dreamt of Manderley again. I love Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This is such a boring answer. It's such a like, eh, Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. <laughs> it's just so good for a reason. You know, it's a famous quote for a reason. And I love that book so, so much. Rebecca, it's about this young woman. She's never named very, very cleverly. She's never named so that you as the reader identify as her, the main character. And she marries this widowed man and goes back to his home with him. And all of the staff are incredibly unwelcoming towards her, especially the main like governess. Rebecca, her husband's ex-wife, the ghost of her is extremely, extremely present within this household and there are things that she can't do to change, she can't do things differently, she's constantly compared to her. It's very very good, it's a gothic, gothic story. The descriptions are beautiful, the setting, the house, the beach, just gorgeous. Love it. Reading Regret, <laughs> where do I start? <laughs> Oh, a recent one would be Juniper and Fawn by Ava Reed. I don't know if I've done my November wrap up yet. <laughs> if I haven't, I'm gonna be talking about it then. Yeah, I, it's a very, very popular book. I blame myself because I should have listened to my instincts telling me that I wasn't gonna like it. And then when I didn't like it about halfway through the book, I really should have just put it down. But I didn't, I pushed all the way through a Russian fairy tale book about these three sisters and they live under their tyrannical father who abuses them. There's a lot of abuse in this book. They're kind of confined to this house, but they sneak out at night to go and watch ballet um, at the theater. And the first time that Marley, I keep calling her Marley. Her name's like Marlinchen or something. Marley for convenience. First time she sneaks out, she immediately falls in love with the main dancer at this ballet. And she starts to sneak out more frequently. It doesn't go well there are certain words because of that book that i never ever want to hear them again i never want to see them again i'm sick of it it was so repetitive so many things i didn't like about that book series you started and need to finish final empire by brandon sanderson i've read the first two books and i've never read the third book i've been reading it for years i need to finish it there are definitely other way other ones but i can't think of them three of your all-time favorite books this will change Literally, if you ask me tomorrow, I'll give you a completely different answer. What shall we say for today? Come on. Emma by Jane Austen. I can't do it, it's too hard. Emma by Jane Austen. It's fine, it's fine. Let's just say, just for today, just for today. Emma by Jane Austen. A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Okay. <laughs> uh, unapologetic fangirl for... I have no clue. Agatha Christie. Very excited for this release more than all others. Oh, the second book in the Amin El Serafi series. I read the first book this year, loved it, and I'm very, very excited to continue. Worst bookish habit. Buying more than I can possibly read. Buying books when I can't afford to. Skimming. I skim. I, I'm really sorry, but I skim. Especially if I get towards the end of a book and I'm kind of like, I, I, for me, I'm done, but there's still more. I skim. Shame. <laughs> X marks the spot, start at the top of your left. Oh, I'm, I can't do that. I can't pick my 27th book, I'm sorry. Let's do it on my Goodreads. 
Uh, let's go on my want to read. The 27th book on my want to read list on Goodreads is Funny Story by Emily Henry, which is coming out, I believe, next year. Emily Henry is a romance author, um, and I have loved her other books so far. Probably my favorite is, ooh, is it? I did really have fun with Happy Place and I've got good memories of it because I read it in Scotland and it's one of the books that I recommended to Luna and Luna enjoyed it and we've talked about it. So I don't know. Your latest book purchase. What was it? Oh, it was in the company of witches, which I was supposed to, again, bloody hell, Luna. I was supposed to read it with Luna. It was supposed to be our buddy read for October. I don't have it with me right now. <laughs> it's in my car. Yeah, and that's supposed to be like a cozy B&B murder mystery. It's owned by this family and somebody gets murdered there. And I believe the family members are witches. Okay, last one. Zzz, snatch her book. The last book that kept you up way too late. And that one was the only one left. Is that what it's called? By Riley Sager. I have talked about this book. Um, not a Riley Sager fan. No, no way am I a Riley Sager fan. Yeah, that book, I don't know why, I found it really addictive and I read it in one go. I started reading it at 5 p.m., finished it at two in the morning. And that was the last book to keep me up that late. Okay, those are all that, those, blah, blah, those are all the questions answered. <laughs> I enjoyed filming this, it was fun. Thank you for watching until the end. Hopefully it wasn't too much of a mess. I'm losing light and I don't have any battery. And it's just a bit of a mess, but hopefully you had fun. And um, yeah, I will see you very, very soon with a, another video. Also, if you do do this tag, please tag me in it. I would love to see what your answers are to it or answer in the comments. I would love to know what your answers are. <laughs> okay, see you very soon.